God is good, and for each day that passes brings us a day closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And today, we got some big news from the July 2022 newsletter for our upcoming MMO home, Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. We will be talking about the big new investment and what that means for the development of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, as well as some exciting new information for the death mechanics for Pantheon. So hang in there with me until the end as we have a lot to unpack, and please like the video if you enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already for more MMO content. So let's get started with this new big investment. Now, although Pantheon Rise of Fallen is largely funded through crowdfunding and people getting pledged packages to secure a spot in pre-alpha, alpha, or beta, or launch, they have also received some significant investor funds, and they have now secured a $2.4 million investment, which is a large amount to keep the team expanding, which in turn decreases the amount of time it would take for the game to reach a launch ready state. They also revealed that not counting pledge packages, they have received $5.34 million total from private investors. Now this is all great for Pantheon MMO fans for obvious reasons as we've seen Visionary Realms expand their team and we've seen the fruits of that labor turn into progress that for those that have been following has been quite staggering the past few months. But also it shows that this is a true game moving into launch as in in no way would an investor drop 2.4 million on a dead weight project. So it should instill quite a bit of confidence in all of the Pantheon Rise of the Fallen fans and even the naysayers, to be honest. If they're honest with themselves, that is. Now, to celebrate Visionary Realms is offering up a limited time new package called the Scion of the Black Rose for $750. This will get you access to pre-alpha and all the rewards from the Black Rose pledge. You can opt to do this over three monthly increments at 250 per month as well if you would prefer that method and all the money talk here is US dollars so you'll have to translate that if you're outside the US. Now please note that it does not include additional VIP rewards besides the pre-alpha access. To me this is the first sign that we're moving closer to getting out of pre-alpha but I would also like to mention that I do believe that the best of pre-alpha access is around the corner so it is a very valuable package. Now Pantheon Rise of Fallen's future is looking brighter by the day and we get to see that progress every month and it's a very beautiful thing. Now let's move into the other big news from the Pantheon newsletter which is the deep information on the death mechanics for Pantheon Rise and Fall and I'm so excited to talk about this. I think they freaking nailed it. Now Pantheon by the way is the type of MMO that it is difficult but it rewards you for taking risks. You can play solo for example but you'll be missing out on some very fun and interesting opportunities of the gameplay loop by avoiding the group play. There will still be fun to be had and for some the sheer challenge of soloing is what they will be after and that's fine. Pantheon isn't here to tell you how to play but when you die you will certainly feel it. Now there is a balance here between feeling the repercussions of death and straight up rage quitting the game forever. Now this balance is more clear with Pantheon Rise of Fallen's vision and let's cover what we know. So first up the newly announced near death mechanic is much akin to purple clubbing in EverQuest but a little better in my opinion. So when your character reaches zero health, they will go prone on the ground and unable to perform most actions. You will be given a smaller health pool that future attacks will push you down until you reach full death. Now also, you will be bleeding and will need to be healed to combat the loss of blood while in this near death state. You can still crawl on the ground obviously moving slower than you would if you were standing up to try to escape danger or even, let's be honest, to die somewhere more convenient for yourself to be revived, perhaps. You know that will be the case sometimes, guys. Don't even try to pretend. But moving will be a strategic choice, as this will also cause you to bleed out faster. Now, when in this near-death state, when it first happens to you, you will drop to the bottom of the threat list, meaning you have a moment there of clearance in most cases, giving your party members a moment to react. This will not help you if you are solo, because the top and the bottom of the threat list are the same thing. You. You are the threat list in that case. In groups though, obviously, this could be a thing that saves you. And as they mentioned in the article, this changes things up for tanks who normally soak up the most deaths as they tend to hold the mobs while everyone else escapes or at least attempts to. 
Healing will bring someone out of this near-death state. However, healers need to be aware that the mob will not overlook the fact that they were brought back. And if they go down again, the mob is probably going to beat them to death the next time instead of moving attention to others. So it's a fool me once kind of scenario and once again, adds more strategy to the situation. Now let's talk about full death and what it means for you, for me, and certainly for Ronick. Pantheon Rise of Vaughn is the type of MMO that needs those moments that take the player really low because without that, that the paradigm of the big wins doesn't feel as good or as memorable. So keep that in mind as I unravel the unfortunate things that will happen to you in the unavoidable situation of one day dying in Terminus or in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Upon death, you will lose a portion of your experience you had earned. And yes, if it dips low enough, you can lose your level. And you will get a durability loss to all equipped gear. Now, if you release from your body instead of getting rest, for example, you will be at the location where you last bound yourself. But we'll have all your equipped gear on. However, the unequipped things that were on you, with the exception of some rare things they mentioned that are enchanted and get to skip the rules, will be on the body and will need a corpse run to retrieve. Don't run away screaming and crying yet. Just hear me out. This is a, a new idea for corpse retrieval and, and you'll want to hear all this. So now about that retrieval, you can go back to the spot of death or have someone drag your body to make it more accessible and you will get your lost inventory back. And also, some of your lost experience returned. But it's not just as simple as that. The lost experience goes into a soul memory, which means you can earn it back with experience bonuses to future experience gains. So to put that simply, say you lost 200 experience points upon death. You get your corpse back, it gives you 200 X that now you will slowly be given back to you as you kill more mobs. So it's kind of put in a bank, that 200 experience. And so let's say this mob you kill next, Next is worth 20 experience. Well, then the bonus, and I'm making all these numbers up, but the bonus, let's say, gives you 10 experience back. And so you would keep getting the 10 experience or what have you, the percentage back, until you've recovered the full 200 experience. This is a very fair and balanced way of doing it, in my opinion, and I really like the thought behind it. It will feel good to get your experience back in a way that is kind of like a debt being paid back to you. Now, your body will eventually go away, you know, rot and be unretrievable. In the case that you cannot get to your body, you can seek out someone from the Aturanum who can summon the body for you, but you will not have access to the experience point loss, and there is a chance, in this case, that some items on the body could be lost during the teleportation process. So once again, fair and balanced, but still, death matters, it hurts, and I love it. And I feel like they've really kind of covered the whole thing. Now, that's without getting into abilities, I'm sure at higher levels, people will be able to do some fancy things, maybe even summon your corpse altogether. I mean, who knows what all will be out there for that. But this is the basics of what death and corpse retrieval will be like, and it sounds like they got all their bases covered, and I think it's a really good modern way to do corpse retrievals without people slash rage quitting. Now, real quick, let's hear from our sponsors, and then we got a lot more to talk about. Real quick, before we continue on with the video, I want to give a thank you to the members of Napalm. This channel is completely community-sponsored. And these are the brave heroes who have stepped forth to strap on their gear and sharpen their blades and are casting the spells of awesome by becoming members of the channel. With exclusive perks, sneak peeks, and more, thank you for your support. And I think you are interested in supporting the channel. Click join down below for a list of options and add your name to the list of knights and mages on the Council of Napalm. And I want to give a very special thank you to the Lords of Napalm. Palm, Bounty Code, Jared Woodhouse, Dimelos, Farthest Reach, Not Sid, Sparrow, Carsonic, Christopher Hensel, Random Rob, Kenneth Kramer, and Zelic Lived. Thank you for your highest tier membership. Now on to the video. So when talking about Pantheon Rise of the Fall, much of us already here and awaiting its release, we are mostly made up of classically spirited MMORPG fans, like EverQuest or Dark Age of Camelot or Final Fantasy XI and many others, and we are accustomed to much of what is being discussed here. Pantheon is the MMO that is taking the really good bits from old school MMORPGs and then improving upon them, or modernizing them you might say, and taking something that is essential to the feel of the game like death mechanics and 
translating that in a way that would appeal to a larger audience. And that isn't easy. And yet, this is what I believe they have done. There is strategy here, in, even in death. There is strategy in everything in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, where you can get better. You can get good. You can learn and progress as a player. Death will be painful and the sting will be long felt. And that's the point. You will respect the world that has been created for you to play in. And I absolutely love it. But the important thing here is what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I love reading all your thoughts and memories and it really makes my day and it helps me fight the YouTube algorithm. And speaking of that, please hit the like button and if you're new here and love MMORPG content, please consider subscribing. We are trying to make it to the big 20k sub mark and also thanks for doing that. Welcome to the family. We do still have the Pantheon Rise of the Fallen developer roundtable coming up next week which will have Ko and the development team talking and we will see what new information and beans we can mine out of it. But until next time my friends, God bless and happy gaming. <laughs>